Good morning, dear friends. Happy to be with you for these few minutes as we meditate together from God's Word and thus hear the voice of God for our service and life for today, for the glory of God. Today's meditation is taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 7, verses 36 to 50. Now, this passage records about a Pharisee who invited Jesus for a dinner. And Jesus went. You know, he never refuses any invitation for dinner or lunch or anything. He always liked to be with the people no matter who invited him. He always went. And there in that town lived a sinner woman who lived her life in sin. And she heard about this Jesus that Jesus is in Pharisee's house having dinner. And she went with an anabaster box of a costly a perfume. And she came, she stood behind Jesus, and then she knelt down and started uh, washing the feet of Jesus with her tears and then using her long hair to wipe. And then she poured the perfume on him like anointing. And of course, this is an expression of extreme love and gratitude. Grateful love. So on this passage, we are going to meditate today. What does genuine selfless love involve? The universal demand is more doing for Christ. All churches want their members uh, to do more for the Lord. And all desire to see among believers more good works, more practical obedience to the Lord's command to go and make disciples and bring them into the kingdom of God. And to Christ's command, not many people are willing to go today. They are willing to pay the money, give some money, and they are willing to pray, but as far as going is concerned, it is another matter altogether. But what will produce this labor, this kind of work? And I emphasize this, nothing, absolutely nothing will produce except genuine love. There will never be more works done for Christ till there is more hearty love for Jesus Christ. Our labor for Christ will be in proportion to our love for Jesus Christ. How big is your love? Your labor will be that big. Grateful love is the secret of our doing much for Christ. The penitent woman in this story is one of the best examples of a such love which produces much labor of love. She showed more honor and respect to our Lord than the proud Pharisee who invited him has shown. She stood at his feet, that's what we read, behind him, weeping. And she washed his feet with her tears and then wiped them with her hairs. And she kissed uh, uh, his, uh, his feet and anointed them with costly perfume. The Holy Spirit has chosen to record this incident to teach us this valuable lesson that only a heart which is filled with such grateful love will do much for Christ. And that love will not count the cost. It doesn't matter what it costs. 
and uh, in order to possess that kind of a love you got to be that grateful and that means you are a recipient of a extreme love and forgiveness which filled her with gratitude to the extreme and so first thing i like to uh, talk to you from this passage is a sacrificial offering what does such love involve remember that is our meditation what does loving god involve and uh, in this I, i want to mention five things and the first thing is it involved a sacrificial offering the perfume was of a highest quality uh, this woman did not go to the bible college not familiar with the doctrines uh, to argue whether tithing is an old testament or a new testament uh, teaching no she has not attended even a sunday school class but she knew one thing which many scholars and theologians of today do not know yet that her love for jesus must give and give beyond measure generously and uh, without measure you know according to luke chapter 6 verse 38 we read there give and it will be given to you a good measure pressed down shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap for the measure you use to give and honor god the same measure will be given to you and when she spent the money for the perfume she wasn't even thinking of a return it is estimated that she paid at least 10000 us dollars for that particular brand of perfume the bible only says costly perfume it is for such givers romans chapter 8 verse 28 works what does it say and we know that in all things god works for the good of those who love him please take note of what is used there it doesn't say those who believe in him and those who possess faith in him no it is everything shall work together for good for those who love him and my friends that is the key and many people wonder why things are not working for us working together for good the bible says but then you got to read that passage do you sincerely truly love god not believing in god but love god we were sinners we were converted to believers now believers believers we need to go through another conversion that is we must be converted into lovers of god and that is when you come closer to god and the second thing um Uh, we uh, learn from this passage is uh, 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 a surrender of all to jesus that box represented her total life her past and her future life she lived in sin she applied this perfume on herself and then uh, sprayed this perfume on her bed to lure her customers but now since she met this jesus which totally transformed her and changed her life today all she has belongs to the lord jesus christ nothing on herself all to jesus you know we sometimes wrongfully sing about ourselves i surrender all 
My friends, when you sing, and if you want to sing, very often people sing in the church, I surrender all. But is it truly, have you surrendered all to Jesus? And if you have surrendered all to Jesus, then Jesus should not have any problem in fulfilling your desire. Because when you surrender everything to Jesus, you will not desire anything for yourself. You desire things that will bring glory and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the third thing I want to mention is, what does such love involve? It involves emotions. She was weeping all the time. When was the last time you wept before the Lord? Do not fight back your tears in the presence of God, my friends. Tears are no signs of weakness. True, genuine tears in the presence of God is, are a, a sign of affection, an affectionate feeling for the Lord Jesus Christ. And the fourth thing is brokenness. Genuine love for Jesus involves a brokenness. She was on her knees and on her hand as she bowed down and stooped down to wipe his feet. Remember who Christ is. Heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool. And my friends, we are the creatures of his footstool. Never forget that. No matter who you are, how high you are in this world, according to the world standard. And the fifth and the last thing, what does genuine love involve? It involves humility and intimacy. Now what is the woman's hair is her glory. Now what do we read in this passage? The oriental woman will let her hair down only in the presence of two persons. One is her father and one is her husband. And only before these two, the oriental woman will let her hair down. Extreme intimacy and, uh, and great uh, respect the two people whom she values the greatest in this world. So my friends, here are five things that involve genuine love. Do you possess these five? A sacrificial offering, and a surrender of all to Jesus and your emotion. You get emotional in the presence of God and it involves brokenness of life or your heart and then humility and intimacy expressed in her action of letting her hair down and wiping Jesus' feet with her hair. And I pray that we understand this. You know, we meaninglessly, meaninglessly we say, if you ask, do you love Jesus? Yeah, casually we say, yes, yes, I love Jesus. But do you really love Jesus? And do you see these five things working in your loving Jesus? Can Jesus see it? My friends, let us not simply answer a question, do you love Jesus? Yes, I love Jesus. Think and determine whether you are a genuine lover of Jesus Christ. Then you can expect all things to work together for good. And he will see to it. And the Lord bless you and the Holy Spirit help you he is your helper in all these things. You can count on him. And may humility 
the garment of humility be put on. May the Lord's blessing be upon you as you give yourself totally to the Lord. Amen. I pray that this day shall be a very fruitful day for you as you glorify God by your actions. In Jesus' name. Amen.